Good afternoon, everyone. Today, we did a little bit, of, or get to do a little bit of shop time. Um, it's that time of the year where I have to make sure everything's all set and ready to go for this fall, and that includes uh, uh, my Proterial bagger, which I've had problems with the guard because it's uh, broken a few times, and I got to do some reinforcement. But the problem I'm having is my uh, old firepower welder that I bought for basically the price of that tank. So I bought the tank and this welder together about seven, maybe eight years ago. And I said I was not going to put any money into this. And I'm just going to run it until it blows up. So uh, the rheostat went bad on the, the um, wire feed. And I'm not even going to mess with it. So what I did is I went to Tractor Supply and bought me a Hobart Handler 140. So uh, I'm going to unbox this, put it together, set it all up, and we're going to start working on this right here. I got problems. So I have to do some welding on this. I tried to piece it together as best I could, but since the wire feed was all messed up it's uh yeah bubble gum on there because it was can't control the speed of the wire and it was just going too fast and just piling up so i made it through with what i had to do but now it's time to fix it because that's the only thing holding is that right there so i have to weld this on i'm going to have to weld this bolt on and i have a hole drilled in the front because i need to put something out there because this is the problem with why it's breaking there's too much out there and it's just hanging too loose so so way way better gun than the other one was way better so, regulator uh, the hose for the gas and the welder itself is a whole bunch different than the other one way way different so this is pretty much self-explanatory if I run out of problems, I will uh, look at the owner's manual, but I don't think I'm going to have too much of a problem. It's pretty much straightforward. It's just a welder. Okay, in this bag here, uh, kind of really nice, is um, a welding gauge or a metal thickness gauge so you know uh, what you're welding, which is uh, kind of nice. Never had one of these, but I'm going to be keeping this around on top of my box. It does come with two tips for welding. Uh, they are, the threads are longer than my other ones, so I'm going to have to get some more of these, which are no big deal, or like five bucks or six bucks or whatever it is. I'm not, it doesn't even matter what they are. I'm just going to get a couple of these. I got two of these for now. That'll do everything. It says uh, 030, which that's what I'm going to be welding. And three quarter inch. That's twisting. Nothing twisting, nothing loosen up. This right here, you could do how do this however you want. I don't like a whole lot of slack of the hole, so I just wrap it around, brings it up nice and tight. Just personal preference. Everything straightforward and simple. That's going to have to be turned up as soon as I get everything else figured out here. Next nice thing is this ground wire. This ground wire is about 10 feet long. And um, if you're doing any kind of working around anything, 10 foot sometimes just isn't big enough either. So uh, we'll just make things work the way I want. Yeah, okay. That's going to be fun. How the heck am I going to hold on to that without getting my fingers stuck in there? Yeah, 
That is nice. That's really nice. Super nice. Okay, so now well, that's not bad. There's a nice little cut out there. Still gonna have to pick it up a little bit. Um, I am gonna be running a big spool of 030. I go up to air gas, which is just up the road from us. About a half, about a five minute drive. So and this. a smaller spool on it you just pull this off you have to take that bolt off there but it's gonna work out just right for me it's just what I need okay so the next thing is I gotta feed this through here which would be the power for the gun everything for the wire and everything but you got to make sure that all goes in there nice and easy so just gonna make sure this is loosened up and this comes all the way through Sure the o-rings and everything's all seated because if you don't it will leak and then you won't have a very good weld for anything Just tighten up the set screw this is already on 030033 so that should Let's see what's the set on 030, 035 is where this is set. It's the same thing up there, so it should be pretty good. Next thing is a wiring here, negative positive. I am not going to be using flux core, so I have to. This is set up for flux core, so I have to switch these two around. Also, make sure this is not plugged in when you're doing this. Thought I'd mention that, but most people would have figured that out or thought about that. Bad, I only dropped one thing so far. That seems to work out okay. And this is uh, positive, negative, does not matter the um, polarity on it because it's just an open or closed circuit. Uh, 
hopefully it's tight enough. You don't want to get it too tight, but you don't want to have it too loose. Okay. Cords are that this is my extension cord that I use to get it away from the wall. This is plugged into a 30 amp uh, breaker. Same thing as it's on my compressor. So what I do is I make sure my compressor's off when I'm welding and vice versa. Because I just don't want to overload the circuit and it's on its own circuit. So I don't have to worry too much about it. This is an appliance cord. So yeah, it's the same, same thickness as the rest or same diameter. So now, let's see. So before you screw the tip in here, you always want to feed the wire through. First fire up, sounds good. Sounds real good. Let's turn this thing up. good. And we are ready to weld. Let's turn the gas on, see where we're at, and adjust that. That closed up nice. Actually, I think I'll probably leave it sitting out there like that. Because otherwise I, I would have to lift this up every time. But, you know, maybe I'll put a board or something under it. But as of right now, it's good. Okay, let's turn this on and see where we're at. And I hear a leak. Yes, there is a leak. I gotta find out that leak. Okay, let's just turn on a little bit. You might hear the train in the background. Okay. That's a big one. Oops. Sorry about the bump. Still leaking. Still bubbling. Yeah, it's just gonna have to work its way in a little bit. Make sure there's no dirt in it. Doesn't feel it, so I think once I get her in there a couple times, it'll be fine. good okay this is a little high for me 20 pounds I like it to be down around the 18 that should do me okay ground cables all hooked up 
let's see how this works. I am set at 2 and 40. Wow, that sounds nice. Not bad, not bad at all. There we go. 16 gauge steel, 2 and 20. Let's see what the inside says. I guess I could have done that too, but that would have been too easy. Okay, 16 gauge, 2 and 30, or, uh, let's see, no gas, CO2, 16 and 2 and 35, so I'm thinking 2 and 20 for what I was doing to be about right. Oops, sorry about that. So, uh, yeah, we're going to be good. Still at 3 and 30. I missed a little bit there, but not bad. Not bad at all. It's hotter than it Dickens. So I put a tack out there, it's not where I want it. I didn't hold it. I gotta get this off. Okay, so the next thing, this is, uh, all this is, is a whole bunch of washers stacked together and I made a spacer. I go to the track supply, buy these by the pounds. I don't even pay attention how much they are. I just buy handfuls of them. So I use them all the time and it's just convenient and easy and I make my own shim the way I want it. So I kept it the same spot. It's at, uh, the, the voltage is at three and the wire feed is at about 35. So let's see what happens. Okay, not enough voltage. So, uh, right now I got the voltage at 5, the wear feed at 40. So, let's see what happens with this. Wire feed still too high, but that's okay. Still not going to come apart. Not going to come apart at all. That's going to be just fine. I don't know if you can see that very well or not. I also run this in my welders. It's a lubricated pad. It cleans the wire. It's uh, by Redner. Um, treated welding wire lube pad. Six pack, increased tip and liner life, remove dust and dirt particles, which does pretty good at cleaning up the wire. Because this will be sitting in the shop for a long time. If the dust happens, get accumulates on there, then this will clean it up before it goes through, and it works pretty good. And 
Now it's a. Whoops, that's the part number for you. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. This uh, Hobart Handler 140, I think, is going to do absolutely wonderful for me. It's uh, twice the welder that the other thing is that I was using for the past seven, eight years. It's going to take me a little bit getting used to how this welds just because of the way I was welding with the other one. And I've used the other one for so long. I don't know how many spools of wire I put through that. But uh, this one's going to last me uh, quite a while. Uh, I sick. It's originally uh, $529, $20 off or something like that right now. So with tax and everything, it was probably about $520, whatever it was. But anyhow, um, I'm happy with this welder so far. Um, it did everything, did everything I want. It's uh, a little bit, it's quite a bit stronger than mother uh, welders. So when I get into the heavier duty stuff, um, like welding on that Jeep, and I'll be doing some frame welding and a lot of manufacturing on that. So uh, that's is going to work out well. I'm really happy with the, um, the length of uh, the ground cable, which is about 10 foot. Length of the um, wire feed uh, cord there, which is longer. So uh, you can never have too long a course just because uh, you're always getting in some place where you shouldn't be to weld. So anyhow, uh, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and click the notification bell. Everybody have a good evening, and we will see you on the next project or equipment review.